Revelation, Hazun, chapter 9, verse 20. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. They would not stop worshiping demons. Ready for this, Lena? This is after Yahoo has poured the bowls out. You know, jacks up a third to a third to two thirds of the water. All these plagues are coming on the earth. And, and all the people see these, he said, but they would not stop worshiping demons, idols of gold, idols of silver, idols of brass, and idols of stone, idols of wood, none of which are able to see nor hear nor talk. And these people did not repent of their murders. They did not repent of their murders, nor of their drug sorcerers, nor of their whore and sexual immorality, nor of them thieving. He said, even with all that, people were holding on to their idols, Lena. They were holding on with all they got and going, no, this can't be wrong. One day, Jesus is going to come out the sky and stop all these plagues. No, Jesus doesn't no, stop anything. Jesus don't even exist. So how yes. do we get to Easter? Now I'm going to tear a hole in Easter. Y'all been waiting on this? Put your seatbelt on. I'm going to tear a hole in Easter. The Britannica Encyclopedia, 1934 edition, states Easter, Esther, also known as Ostara or Easter, was the goddess of spring in the religion of the ancient Angles and Saxons. Anglo-Saxons. Every April, a festival was celebrated in her honor. With the beginnings of Christianity, the old gods were put aside. From then on, the festival was celebrated in honor of the resurrection of Christ, but was still known as Easter after the old goddess. <laughs> this is a mess. This is a mess. It is totally a mess. Now, in the spirit of love, Let's spend a little time tearing down some idols <laughs> that many unknowingly follow and are led astray. Easter, Easter. Yeah. Now here's the key. We're not here to offend, but if you get offended, you know why you got offended. Easter's a wicked abomination. The word has been adopted from, from pagans as an attempt to utilize what's called syncretism. Try to blend it in. That's a, that's a behavior that is absolutely an abomination to Yahuwah. So if you recognize Halloween for what that is, then it should be no different to recognize Easter for what it is. When this is exposed, it's going to start to fulfill the prophecies of Hazun 18. That's how deep this is, Lena. Because prophecies are getting it fulfilled once we expose and tear these things down. Most people don't understand. Joe Carter coming in with that super kingdom business. Most people don't understand that when we're doing what we're doing, we're part of the fulfilling of revelation of the, of the prophecies. Now watch. So like if you go read Hazun 18, you're going to go, man, that's, we're doing it. Babylon is still with us. But for a fact, it's going to fall. Easter was celebrated by the Assyrians and the Phoenicians and the Philistines. 
You should look up the word Easter in the Webster's Dictionary and do further research in other sources. The festival involved the rites of the spring near the equinox of Venus when the pagans believed that the Mother Earth was impregnated by the sun. This is what Easter is all about, what I'm sharing with y'all. They engaged in ritual sex acts. And they used symbols of sex fertility, like eggs, rabbits, and hot cross buns. What is that Easter bunny doing in this? It's the symbol of the sex fertility, the fertility and the yeah. abominable sex they were having. You understand? That's what's going on. The Babylonian symbol for the female was and still is a circle with the crux beneath it. The round cakes were baked for the queen of heaven. That's why we don't do no birthday cakes no more. These cakes are made for the queen of heaven, Regina Coley, or Regina Coley, and the great mother, Magna Mater with the cross symbol indicating the female. The cross also indicated the equinox when the Earth's orbit crossed the celestial equator. Think about that. What are we talking about? Crazy paganism. A lot of idolatry. To ensure a prosperous growing season with their crops, Y'all believe in this mess? We're tearing it down right now. No, we don't celebrate birthdays, Adam. Because we don't do, we used to, before we knew better. We said, oh, what's so wrong? And even once we found Yahuwah, we were still trying to figure it out. Right, Lena? We were still trying yeah. to figure it out. And then all of a sudden, we as we got down it, and Yahuwah just, oh, he goes, you said, when you burn that cake, and you put them little hats on, well, hats those little wizard like hats, witch. those are witch wizard hats. Witch hats. Like, oh, there you go. Yeah, we don't. The only thing we do is just strict the, the seven feasts of Yahuwah. We don't do seven feasts else. of Yahuwah. Not even, not even nothing that is related. We with don't the do no Fourth of, of the July, countries, uh, Thanksgiving, none of that, not, Memorial Day. We, we're just keeping it like the closest to what Yahuwah have asked to do. That is those seven feasts. And that's it. You, you don't know. All that is man-made, and you don't know where it really came from. So it just is best to stay safe and, and, and listen to Yahuwah. All right, honey, let's do this at the same time. We're going to shoot a hole in Easter. Ready? Okay. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. All right, we're going to shoot a hole in Easter's head. <laughs> to ensure prosperous growing season, Pagans would roll their eggs decorated with bright colors of spring of their, uh, of, on their fields, hoping to get the eggs to get fertile. That's why they would roll the eggs, Lena. These eggs were then hidden from the, quote, evil spirits in rabbit's nest. Another symbol of fertility. The United States federal government does this very thing on the White House lawn every year on Easter Sunday. Every year, the most powerful government in the world, as of now, does this practice. Right out front, perpetuating it to the country. Pagan. Wait a minute. <laughs> Easter is the name of the Babylonian mother of harlots that's spoken of in Hazun 17. People don't even pick that part up, Lynn. 
Hardly anybody picks up that all these prophecies about the end time and revelation, these pagan, a lot of these pagan holidays play right into it. That's why I like Christmas and Easter are the top two because they feed you right in the revelation. Yeah. yeah because they tried, they tried to make it fit like if they are from the scriptures. Yeah. King James, the original King James, it's got the word Easter in it. It's got the word Easter in it. They even, in the new King James, they correct it and go, we can't put that in there. Because there's no word in the scriptures, the word Easter. But they put it in old King James that everybody. Hold on. Y'all ain't even going to believe this. Yes, you will. Because y'all like the truth. Y'all love the truth. So in Revelation 17, Easter is that Babylonian mother of harlots. And her image stands as the sun goddess located as Lady Liberty in the New York Harbor called the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Easter. Easter. Y'all want to know who Easter is? Y'all want to get a symbol of what they made her up to be? Look at your Statue of Liberty in the USA. There you go. That's Easter. That's the sun goddess. That's the one, the mother of harlots that Revelation 17 talks about. And that people praise and honor in the USA. Say, bring me your poor, your wretched. We will take them in. Come on in to the mother of harlots. Yeah. What are you talking about? I don't play with none of that nonsense. So every time y'all go, y'all want to go visit the Statue of Liberty, you're, you're paying homage to the mother of harlots. Whenever you are celebrating Easter, you might as well go down and bow down and just start doing your little bow down to the Statue of Liberty. This colossal statue even has a tower as the headpiece and it's seen as is seen worn by Artemis. So that headpiece is Artemis, another pagan Lena. It don't stop. Another one. Yes. You got Easter up there, Asherah, which is really what it is. Then you bring in the god the the pagan Artemis up there. In the Tanakh, this is she is identified as a Shura. I'm telling y'all, Nimrod's mama and wife. <laughs> Sean said, "You tell people happy birthday." No, listen, stop. Everybody, stop trying to angle us. When we say we don't participate, we don't participate. We don't say happy this. We don't do no acknowledgement. We don't do none of it. You can't twist our arms. We don't do any of that nonsense. We don't do it. All right. This, <laughs> the seven horns or sun rays should be a strong indication of her true identity. Go look up the Statue of Liberty real quick. Tell me how many horns you see off of. This all be interesting for everybody. Yeah, go do it. I'm going to go over and do it with y'all. I ought to put the picture up. You looking it up, Lena? <laughs> huh? Yes. I thought you got real quiet. Yeah, I'll put my... Uh... I mean, how many horns coming off of that Artemis? On how many horns coming off the Statue of Liberty? That's a Shira, that's Easter, right there. Look at Amber, seven. Oh, is that a coincidence? Seven. Y'all think that's a coincidence? Y'all think this is a coincidence? Nah, I'm gonna yeah, keep Rich, going. Rich Cap said, like all movies. Uh, has that coming out in the beginning? 
Yeah, it's crazy. Got that mother of harlots in the beginning. The seven horns are what are known as the seven sun rays. And that should be a strong indication of her true identity. Her emblem is the flower of the lily seen, illustrated. Well, you can see it illustrated because it's showing you. Okay. An American society <laughs> called the Easter Seals Society. Y'all heard of the Easter Seals? Very famous. Uses the fleur de lis, the French flower of the lily, as their logo. And they have no religious affiliations whatsoever. At the Statue of Liberty, there is a plaque dedicating the image uh, to the Mother Earth Easter. Come on, Lena. Yeah. Nobody's even looked at that. No, and look what, like, just just going to Wikipedia. Look what it said. The statue is a figure of Libertas, the Roman goddess of liberty. Like, it's just even telling you right there. You don't have to do, like, a big research to know that that's pagan. Crazy. It's crazy. Lena, I don't, know, I don't know if you heard what I said. It's crazy. If, listen. If you go visit the Statue of Liberty, Lena, listen to this carefully. I think you was doing something. I want you to come, but I want you to hear this. There's a plaque. You know what a plaque is? Yes. A, yeah, I heard right? that. I heard you. On heard the you. Statue of Liberty, it says it's dedicating this to the Mother Earth East Star. Is. It's so pagan, it's crazy. And it's right there in front of everybody. That's what the truth of all this paganism is being there in front of everybody. But people just ignore it or they think, oh, it's okay to have all these GODs. It's okay to have all these GODs. So that's why people have accepted all this. What are y'all going to do with this? Tear it down. Tear it down. Hold on. I ain't done yet. I'm almost there. And I'm sure they're teaching this to the kids in school. They do. <laughs> like to dead, like it says it there, Easter. There's a plaque dedicating it. Most churches decorate with lilies on Easter morning. And that's a fact. Because they're all involved in the paganism. They can say, why y'all doing it? Oh, that's tradition, it's custom. Yeah. They bring that to all the Virgin Marys here all year round, the lilies. So instead of inheriting the truth, Lena, they've inherited lies. People have inherited lies of Babylon. Like why are things occurring the way they're occurring? How did Easter get here? You can't just go, my mama did it. My grandma, they told me to do it. You're not going to get by with Yahuwah like that. It really is a junk pile. <laughs> That's what that thing is. Yeah. See, we know who's behind it. Nimrod, Asmolech, Baal, Mithras, and so on. He is also one with his mama Ishtar. Sunday, Sunday is his diversion. It's a lie. Easter Sunday, what they say? Easter, Easter's Sunday. Look what it is. Mama and son married. Mama and son. Easter and son God Zeus, they're married together on the Sunday. We ain't got to wait for no beast. The beast is already here. It's in front of your face. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's so, it's so clear. What y'all going to do with this? Tear it down. Pagan religions throughout time parallel each other. 
carrying the sun and mother earth, the child model, the virgin from Babylon. They carried it from media, Persia, Phoenicia, Egypt, Greece, Rome, and the Celts. The Medes cooked the mythology into Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism, producing the magicians, priests called the Magi. They worship Ahura, Haoma, and Orzmazd as their trinity. There's your trinity. No mess with no trinity. We don't worship Ahura, Haoma, and Orzmazd. The Greeks. They hold up Zeus as their son deity, whose mother was Lydia, shown riding a swan. Guess what? Her headpiece is just like Easter's headpiece. Then you can look at Athena and Ishtar, and you'll see you're seeing the same exact person. What are y'all going to do with this? Yeah, Cheryl said, mother and son are in every culture around the earth. They take it from there. They just change it from culture to culture to make you think it's okay to give praises to all these this virgins and, and these mothers and all that. That's why they, where do you think the Mother Day comes from? That's not from Yahuwah. Mother's Day is Easter. Yep. Y'all gonna ask us that one too. Y'all celebrate Mother's Day? No. We don't no celebrate Day, Easter. No Father Day. We don't celebrate Father's Day, Nimrod's Day. We don't celebrate them. It don't say it in the scriptures to do it. So leave it alone. Yep. Like, like, like if you come, come up with something of your own, by the way. Like if you want to say, hey, we're gonna celebrate. You know, we're having this special time together as our family on this day of the year and this family day. All right, do your thing. But why are you going to try to make an excuse? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm celebrating Mother's Day because, you know, that's I really honor my mother. Lena and mom, we can watch her get a little tore up every year. because She don't get no flowers. She don't get no special notification from us. After 12 years, she... She got it. <laughs> now she's like, all oh, the hell with it. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. From the outset, the pagans were absorbed into Christianity. It was the policy, they made it a policy to accept everything they were accustomed to celebrating. You can hear it directly from the Catholic organization itself. The Catholic Cardinal John Henry Newman in his book, The Essay on the Development of Christian Doctrine, published in 1970, in 1878. Published in 1878, states in chapter 8. You ready for this, Lena? Let's go. Ready. I don't know if y'all ready for this. This is tearing down meticulously. Yes. The rulers of the church, the Catholic church, from the early times were prepared, should the occasion arise, to adopt, to imitate, or to sanctify, means to give it their approval, the existing rights and customs of the population. That means they were prepared to just do what the pagans were doing. As well as the philosophy of the educated class. The use of temples and those dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasion with branches of trees, wreaths, incense, lamps, candles, votive offerings on recovering from illnesses, holy water, holy days, and seasons, 
the entire church calendar, use of calendars, processions, blessings on the fields, sacerdotal vestments, the ring in marriage, chants, the, Ky the, Ky the Kyrie Eliasson are all of pagan origin. And the world still thinking that they are now being ruled by the Catholic Church. Yet the church sanctified it and adopted it into the church. End quote. That's from a Catholic <laughs> cardinal. He said that these are all pagan origin. There you have it. <laughs> Quotes. If Easter was a pagan festival celebrating the impregnation of Mother Earth, how did it get mixed up with Christianity? Christianity's pagan connection started with one man more than any other. Guess who the one man is? Old man Constantine. <laughs> yes, Daniel. He said the nerve of them to think that they have the authority and or power to add to or take away anything from the pure true worship of Yahuwah. That's what they have done. The Pope he can woke up one day and said, I had a vision and we're going to change this part of the scripture of the Bible. And we're going to start doing this today. And because they think he is the Allah. It's just how crazy it is. And the world is being ruled by them. There's no other religions, but the Catholic is the root of everything. Okay. I'm, we're not done. You want me to keep going back? I'm gonna keep I'm, going. Keep ready, going. Ready, get, get your gun. Get your get your spiritual gun back up. Pow. One more time. One, <laughs> two, three. Pow. All right. In three twenty five C.E. or A.D., the Roman Emperor Constantine convened what now is called the Council of Nicaea. He gathered hundreds of elders bishops together in order to unify basic doctrines and teachings that we've talked about many times before and establish common practices. This universalizing produced the Catholic Church. So it was the Council of Nicaea that actually created the Catholic Church. The, the Latin word Catholic means universal. There was no Catholic on the planet until the Council of Nicaea. Y'all realize that? That's amazing. There was no Catholic on planet Earth until the Council of Nicaea. <laughs> the only council mentioned in the writings conducted by the first Nazarenes or Nazarim is mentioned in Acts Mahashim 15. The purpose which was to determine how to accommodate the Guyin, the Gentile converts who were turning to the true creator. The only topic at that council was circumcision. Since immersion in the name of Yahuwah and receiving the, re the spirit of Yahuwah into your heart is our circumcision. It was decided that physical circumcision was not necessary. <laughs> Everybody get that? That's a very important point to understand for all adult male guyim. I mean, if you were not raised as a, a way of Yahuwah or Yahuwah, you don't have to get circumcised. But I'm going to tell you, if you have a baby and it's a male, you must on the eighth day circumcise that baby. Y'all got that? That's how it works now. Okay. 
Some of the men going, Phew. but some of the men going, I'm going to go do it. It's up to you. Constantine's council sought to institute new tolerances for pagan patterns <laughs> and outlawed the patterns of the Savior, Yahuwah Mashiach, that were lived and taught. He had already proclaimed Sunday, Dia Solis, the day of rest, dedicated to the sun. He did that in 321 AD or CE. Now it came time to synchronize or syncretize more pagan customs by not repenting and turning away from all these pagan foolishness. For them, it was much more simpler just to absorb paganism and figure out how to blend it in. Political and religious control, y'all know, slippery. So by keeping the pagan rituals in place, they were able to maintain control of the people with minimal effort, Lena. Yeah. Yeah, because if he stay, if they stay to the truth and they and they fight for the truth, they knew there was not going to have that many followers because most of the people was pagan. So the opposite of truth became the custom of the world. Everybody got that? Yeah. So the opposite of the truth became the accepted practice of the world because the most powerful government said, this is how we're going to do it. And it's okay. <clears throat> Rather than make 99% of the people conform to a totally new proper behavior, there you go, they're giving out memberships. Lee. Kingdom business. <laughs> He's doing kingdom business. Y'all getting a membership into the Promote the Truth YouTube community. So now y'all get that ribbon beside you when you come in here. Thank you, Daniel. And we do some other little perks inside there. More of it coming. Y'all bear with us because we're doing all this translation. So Lena, so rather than get the, because you got 99% of the people were pagan. Yeah. 1% was following the scriptures. So they were like, the governments, Constantine and them, they were like, look, let's just adopt the pagan stuff. That's a lot easier. Let's just put a little scriptural spin on it and put the and get all these pagan customs in here. This is what overwhelmed all of our ancestors. And they were being taught this as, as young children. Paganism has always been highly skilled at wrapping paganistic behaviors together with righteousness. They're highly skilled at it, Lena. Making the loosely understood things, just, just get it all clouded up, and then they're going to call it the mysteries of faith. In order to blend practices into the universal Catholic behavior, the real Shabbat was outlawed. It was what? It was outlawed. Mm -hmm. They knew the real Shabbat. They knew it. It was outlawed along with the Pasaha. The Passover was outlawed. And other observances of the appointed times. So all appointed times, Lena, was outlawed. <clears throat> Y'all want to know why you don't know this stuff? How convenient. This, this was a prophecy that was revealed in Daniel. Daniel. In the prophecy, the four beasts or kingdoms would arise, which are clearly number one, Y'all learning today. Babylon, number two, Media Persia, number three, Greece, number four, Rome. That's your Danny, y'all. You don't have to go a long way to guess this. You got to be paying attention to what's going on. 
at Daniel 7.25, Daniel 7.25, the fourth beast is clearly described. The fourth beast is the kingdom that will appear on earth, and that is Rome. That's the fourth beast. It will be different from all the other kingdoms, and it will devour the entire earth. Trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are the ten kings who will come out of this kingdom of Rome. Caesars, Kaisers, Kaisers, Czars, Julius Caesar up to Constantine. These are these ten kings that's in the prophecy of Daniel. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. So Constantine fused sun worshipers with Nazarene teachings and writings and was not the family name of Caesar. So Constantine did not take on the name Caesar. He said, I'm emperor. So he was different as the scripture says, Lena. Now, it says that he will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High, Yahuwah. He will oppress Yahuwah's saint. They say, look, they, this is important, right? He's going to oppress the set-apart ones. Annette Green's in the building. She see me tearing it down. Tearing it down. With the support of my awesome wife. Love you, Annette. So, Lena, look, it says that he will speak against the Most High and oppress his set apart ones. Yeah. And he will think and try to change times and laws. Did they change the calendar? Yes or no? Yes, they did. Did they How take many out the tries did they did? Huh? How they have to make so many tries? They put wow. 10 days, 7 days, 8 days, 9 days. They they was Y'all hear what Lena's saying? 7 day weeks, 8 day week, 10 day weeks, 9 day weeks. They've been all over the place. All over the place. Yes. Crazy. So did okay, so he changed the calendar. And change laws. Didn't they take the second commandment out of the Catholic Bible? Yes. Is that changing the law? It is changing the law. Didn't they say that the Shabbat is no longer the true seventh day, but it will only be Sunday? Did they say that? Yes. So they changed the second. They took it out. They didn't just change it. They removed it. They changed the 10th commandment by splitting it into two. And then they changed the fourth commandment. And they completely obliterated the first and the second, and, and I mean, the first and the third commandment. Because the first one is, you got to have your, who was named. The third one is, you can't bring his name to nothing. So they did all this. So the beast power has done what scripture has said. Yep. The changing of the set times, the appointed times, the creed at the Bahrain, <clears throat> the Bahrain 16 and Uracara, Uracara Leviticus 23, were wiped out and replaced with pagan observances like Easter. The hell y'all doing playing with Easter knowing this? Huh? Who going to mess around with Easter? All you Christians that have this video sent to you by somebody that loves you, they trying to snatch you out of the fire. That's a real thing. Yes. Don't get offended. Get excited. Like, go, man, I, I, like this is, this is historical fact. This is no fiction. This is one historical book after the next. Verified that this yeah. is what happened. Yeah, do your own research. 
it's time to do your own research. Don't just take this belief that you have because your mom taught you, because your grandparents did it, because your great-grandparents did it, and it's a bunch of custom before. Just study for yourself. Find the truth on yourself. There's too many uh, evidence out there that this was manipulated. Everything was manipulated. So if you're listening to this and any of your, uh, of your Huan friends have sent you this, just take your time, analyze everything, and have some common sense with everything. Make questions. Is this make sense? If the way things have come in the world, is this supposed to be? I have been deceived. We all was deceived. I was a Catholic in a, in, in a time in my life. It don't mean that I'm going to just stay into that because I know it's deception. So I decided to call on Yahuwah, and you can call on Yahuwah too after you do your own research and see the common sense of this, that everything makes sense, that everything aligns with what the true scripture says. It's deep. Like, this is a real call out because Easter is nothing but pagan period. I just laid it out. There's nowhere in all of scripture, even in your Greek up scriptures, Bible, that mm -hmm. tells you to celebrate Easter. Observe Easter. Nowhere. No. It tells you to do Passover and it tells you the dates. But what they did with it, what they did, they said, that now everything has been uh, being a wave because Je Jehusha was nailed to the stake. It's not true. Nope. That was no that nail. The law was no nail to the stake. The sacrifice, the sacrificials, they 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 were, but not not celebrating and observing the, this feast. Jehusha said forever, and forever, still forever. Still. The end of the world. We don't. We are we out of forever? Are we out of forever yet, Lena? Are we still in forever? We're still in forever until the world is not burned up. We're still in forever. We're still so in forever. That's that's very 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 important that we all analyze that.